you mentioned a, a word that whenever it gets mentioned on the show, some people like flip their lids and then other people go, yes, like, why don't you say this more? So you said the word cult and, yeah. um, and that word, every time it's used generates a ton of baggage. I've used it myself. I've, I've, I've mentioned it. And I think, um, I think what I've, where I've kind of landed in the show, cause I, I started with just saying like always independent Baptist cult, independent Baptist mm-hmm. cult to, mm-hmm. Okay, the movement's a cult. I, I I think where I'm at now is I think the movement at large and the way it's intended to run based on who started it is very much a cult. I think that there are the exceptions are a handful of churches that are not cultish, which seem mm-hmm. to be the exception, not the rule. Um, and so I'm very comfortable saying independent fundamental Baptist cult. Um, I, I think that term applies in a broad way. Um, I know you referred to kind of the Gothard sect, which I think yeah. is pretty indisputably <laughs> a cult. Definitely. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious if you could just kind of break down because, because when people hear the word cult, they have a lot of different connotations. I'm curious kind of like in your thought process and your research and tons of writing on it, like what are some of the tenets that make you go like, okay, this isn't just a religious kind of group. Like this leans into more of a cult. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of telltale signs for sure. Uh, speaking specifically toward the Gothard movement, you did have one person in authority that was receiving divine revelations from God. Maybe he didn't call that, call it that. Maybe he didn't call himself a prophet. Um, but his followers called him the modern day apostle Paul. That's how we all refer to him as. And he would talk about how he would, you know, go off every January and fast for 30 days and stay in this little cabin for 30 straight days. And that's where he would get all of his ideas for the following year. And I'm not saying that God can't speak to you directly, but the way that he presented it was definitely, you know, he was receiving these divine revelations and things that had never been shared before, never been spoken before, new meaning to scripture. I mean, IBLP's slogan is a new approach to life. (laughs) And so it was all like new and exclusive and just, just within the Gothard movement. And um, not only all that, but it was the only way. This was the only way to live. This was the only right answers. This was the only correct interpretation of scripture. So that's very classic sign of a cult. We uh, have some major problems in the world today and uh, they're getting worse. And Mm -hmm. so uh, we have the answers Mm -hmm. in given to us by the Lord. And we're getting really thrilling results by taking the directions in scripture and applying them to the problems of our day. There was some money aspect to it, for sure. Um, there were rules as far as getting into ATI. You had to sign this very legal, very lengthy document that stated all the things that your family wasn't going to do. You're not, the men aren't going to have beards. You're not going to have TV in your house. All these things. Um, so there were very strict rules to stay within um, ATI. And um, you did have to pay a lot of money. There was a lot of materials that you had to buy. You had to buy all these wisdom booklets and just books upon books upon books to like learn. And it kind of reminds me of stories I've heard of like Scientology, Mm -hmm. where it just completely consumes your finances because you're required to just buy all this material. So that was um, a part of it as well that I think really classifies ATI is a cult. Um, and then on the broader picture, um, we were, like we discussed before, you're very much sheltered. You're put into a bubble. Um, you are encouraged to shun anyone outside of the bubble, yeah. including family. So you have a teenager that decides to <clears throat> um, move out and make some different decisions from their parents you're taught to shun them. Um, maybe we didn't call it shunning an ATI, but it was hundred percent. The teaching was, right. was shunning for sure. Um, and just this idea that even just, you're not supposed to have friends. You're not supposed to socialize or have any kind of relationship with anybody that doesn't agree a hundred percent with what 
ATI teaches. Right. Um, you aren't even supposed to show the ATI materials to anybody outside really? or even like the base. Yes, there was a rule about that. You were not supposed to show the materials to anybody outside of it. They had to go to, they had to buy their own workbook and go to the basic seminar themselves. So they could like, you know, be fully indoctrinated in person. Right. <laughs> um, so so a lot of, yeah, a lot of like exclusivity in that, in that, you know, we're just, we're so sheltered, so much in a bubble and the major consequences that would happen if you dare step a toe out of line there was no everything was black and white everything had a yes or no answer and this is what is biblical and this is what isn't there was no gray areas at all so there was no freedom within families to decide what was best for them it was only one way and it's bill Gothard's way and this is the way that's taught in wisdom booklets there's nothing else if you're doing anything else you are sinning 